tonight. Saskatoon police are investigating the city's sixth homicide of the year and the second in five days. It's not what about, about sex, it? Bisexuality. What about it though? Also, thick tension at the Regina Public School Board meeting where protesters clashed over what some call sex and pornography in the classroom. Plus, after more than two dozen medals for elite snowboarding, Regina's Mark McMorris is honored by the University of Regina at spring convocation. It was a, a big holy cow and um, I was most happy for my mom because I know she'll be over the moon about this. This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It is Wednesday, June 14th, and the CBC Saskatchewan News starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Police in Saskatoon are investigating the city's sixth homicide of the year. It happened around 7 o'clock this morning across the street from an elementary school. Classes were cancelled for the day as police went on the hunt for suspects. One of those seen here in surveillance video is 24-year-old Shane Thomas. He was seen running through a park in the 200 block of Avenue S South. Police believe he's known to the 35-year-old victim. They arrested Thomas this afternoon. As Dan Zakreski reports, police had already taken 17 other people into custody. Students were supposed to be getting dropped off here at Pleasant Hill Community School this morning. Instead, the street out front of their school was a crime scene. A man was shot and killed in a duplex on this block around 7 this morning. Police say they followed leads to another house a couple blocks away. Police say they spotted a man and a woman leaving the house in a truck. Now they tried to stop it, but it took off out of town. RCMP put out an alert saying the pair were armed and dangerous. Now the pair ditched the truck and were arrested on foot about 90 kilometers north of the city. Back in the city, police split officers between two crime scenes. They worked at the duplex where the man died, and they took 15 people into custody from this house. This is the second homicide in this area in five days. Dan Zakreski, CBC News, Saskatoon. Regina Central Library downtown was closed today after a teenager was stabbed there last night. Regina police have arrested a 14-year-old boy. They say he assaulted a 15-year-old, both physically and with a blade. The altercation started outside the library, then moved into the foyer. The victim was sent to hospital with serious but not life-threatening injuries. The library says no one else was hurt during the incident, but the library was closed today to give employees time to process what happened. The accused has been charged with aggravated assault, resisting arrest, and possession of a weapon. A Regina Public School Board trustee says he and other trustees are facing a relentless campaign of harassment. Tensions rose last night outside a school board meeting as dozens of protesters and counter-protesters faced off over what's being taught to children. As Nicholas Frew reports, the school board even called police to provide security. Transsexuality is not what about it? sex, bisexuality. What about it though? It doesn't need to be taught in the school. Why are you pushing it? It's not taught. It exists. This was the scene outside of a packed Regina public school board meeting Tuesday evening. Dozens of people protested against what they consider to be pornography and inappropriate sex and gender ideology taught in schools. Others, including educators, counter protested. Everybody needs to be welcome in our school system. Everybody needs to be who they are and be accepted who they are in the school system. The group calls themselves the Prairie Conservative Alliance. No one agreed to be interviewed by CBC News about their views. But during the protest, some vocalized anti-LGBTQ rhetoric. They alleged some textbooks contain pornography and that information about sexuality and gender identity are being forced on students. They also voiced concerns about litter boxes in schools, a debunked hoax that alleges schools place litter boxes in washrooms for students who identify as cats. They need to stop. And, and you know, this is, the, this is the 2023. This school board trustee says this is just the latest installment of a months long saga. He says these people, only some of whom have kids in public school, started attending school board meetings in April, and their behavior has become more aggressive and disruptive. The school board called in police to provide security ahead of Tuesday's meeting. 
Ted Gilletta says he's been harassed for months. Some of the trust haven't shaken up, and it's very, and all this you have to look you back. When night you cannot go, and then uh, it, it is even it's a while ago I was walking by the mall, and someone yelled at me, you are a child molester, you stop sexualizing our children. And so that's uncalled for. Gilletta says the school board is trying to build a safe and inclusive environment within public schools, and that these protests are making their jobs harder. Nicholas Fru, CBC News, Regina. The province is expanding free rapid access to counseling for children. It will give Family Service Saskatchewan $1.7 million each year to provide the mental health service. Family Services already offers programs to adults, but this will target youth, children and caregivers. It will open in person and virtual services in Regina and Saskatoon first. The goal is to help young people dealing with depression, addiction or violence at home and to deliver that help before they're in a crisis. People have to wait for services. Sometimes things get worse. And uh, sometimes that, that means that they've had to wait so long they have to go to an emergency room, they uh, are in crisis. And our goal is if people could access sooner, maybe it wouldn't need to escalate to that degree as quickly. The province says it will expand the youth services to another 13 communities at least, including Moose Jaw, Swift Current and Yorkton. School boards in Regina have wrapped up their review of the school resource officer program. The program has been running for 43 years and currently there are 15 officers stationed across the city's elementary and high schools as part of the program. While a decision is unlikely to come until next school year, the topic did come up at Tuesday's board meeting of Regina Public Schools. Opponents to the school resource program say now is the time to take police out of schools. There is significant documentation of historic and current concerns from black and indigenous people of racial bias by the Regina police. Knowing all this, it's clear that the SR programs decrease the safety of black and indigenous students in schools. The review of the school resource program started in 2020. Regina Police Chief Evan Bray has been an outspoken supporter of the program and its future in the city. The mayors of Saskatchewan City say the provincial government is not doing enough to combat the growing homelessness crisis in our province. The mayor of Lloydminster posted a statement on Twitter this morning. Gerald Albers is speaking on behalf of the city mayors within the Saskatchewan Urban Municipalities Association, or SUMA. Albers says social assistance rates are too low to help people escape poverty and enter the workforce. He says the province's attempt to save money is actually costing more money in the end. Our social housing is equally in terrible shape with approximately 3,000 units sitting empty while our hometowns grapple with a growing homelessness crisis. Many of these units sit empty because they have not been maintained by the province and are now in terrible shape and condition that are unfit for inhabitation by anyone. And so the numbers of homeless individuals on our streets continue to grow. Beds and shelters are already full. Much of the expensive, the expensive beds in our hospitals and correction center facilities end up being used instead, and we're all paying the price as taxpayers. Social Services Minister Jean Makowski was not available for an interview, but his office did issue a statement. Makowski said homelessness is a complex issue, and they're working hard with all levels of government, including Indigenous and community partners. He also said they've upgraded 1,000 social housing units and plan to spend another $70 million to continue that work this year. In just over 48 hours, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will take the field in their home opener against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And the biggest question is, will starting quarterback Trevor Harris play or not? Harris was injured on the final play of the Riders' win over the Edmonton Elks on Sunday night. Practice was closed to the media today, so his status on Friday night is still up in the air. And head coach Craig Dickinson was just as coy about whether it will be Harris or backup Mason Fine. No comment. We'll still let you know on game day. The injury report will be out later today, and you can read it at that time. I mean, it's on Wednesday. Um, just not even looking for, like like not even focused on Friday. Just continue to prepare in the, uh, throughout the week and, and practice. And uh, you know, just again, what can I do to be the best quarterback I can for my teammates and all that? So, just going to continue to do what I've been doing since the beginning of training camp, and uh, we'll see what happens. 
Dickinson also says not to expect receiver Drell Walker in the lineup on Friday night. Kickoff at Mosaic Stadium against the Blue Bombers is at 7 o'clock. Olympic snowboarder Mark McMorris received the University of Regina's highest honor today. I consent to admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honor Kossar, and invest you with all the powers, rights, and privileges that are pertained to you. <laughs> McMorris was given an honorary degree at the spring convocation ceremony. He was recognized in front of a huge crowd, including more than 2,000 students who received their degrees or diplomas today. McMorris has been a professional snowboarder for 13 years. He's achieved incredible success, winning three Olympic medals, 22 X Games medals, and four U.S. Open championships. And while he didn't receive his education in the classroom, he says snowboarding has given him a rich education. Perseverance is everything. Hard work, dedication, surrounding yourself with a good team. Um, there's going to be a ton of ups and downs along the road, but it's always worth it to push through those and um, rely on the people close in your circle to help you get through the lows and celebrate the highs with them. McMorris has also given back to sport along with his brother Craig through the McMorris Foundation. It helps make sport more affordable and accessible for kids in Saskatchewan. Well, with the wind and the heat a little bit more bearable in Saskatchewan today, a gorgeous day to be down by the river or out on a walk in Saskatoon. The sky there, not as clear and blue and sunny this hour as the city gets some rain. Ethan will have more on what's happening with the weather after the break. Stay with us. Seven million Canadians do not have a family doctor. The problem is particularly acute for those who live outside a major city. One Canadian medical school was established to directly address the issue. And as David Common reports, after 15 years of graduating doctors, it appears to be working. What's going on? What's brought you into emergency today? Uh, the emergency room in Sioux Lookout, Ontario, is rarely quiet, seeing patients from across northern Ontario. Like many rural and remote areas, getting doctors to live here is a major challenge. Do you think you'll ever work in a Toronto hospital? Definitely not Toronto. Dr. Brenna Duffy is bucking the trend. She only wants to work in smaller communities. No offense to my urban colleagues, but I just don't feel like you would get the same kind of challenges and interest. I mean, like I said, we have such complicated cases. It makes medicine fun. Come with me over to the board. And Dr. Duffy is a graduate of the Northern Ontario School of Medicine. Now in its 15th year, it's doubling its student intake and finding success with its model, recruiting future doctors who come from smaller communities, training them away from big city hospitals so they'll stay rural and remote when they graduate. Do you think what you've got is the solution? I think it's part of the solution. Doctor and school dean Sarita Verma calls it the no ordinary school of medicine, in part because students spend much less time in a classroom. Traditional healers can come and make their medicines because... Ninety percent of the patients here are indigenous. Many of the doctors are not. This training intended to bridge their worlds. That's the birch bark fungus. It's really high in antioxidants. Blood sugar. At the nearby Lac Sol First Nation, soon-to-be doctors Rosemary Rankin and Tafim Unnisa are halfway through a four-week live-in immersion on the reserve. To better understand the communities they'll eventually serve, Tafim is from Timmins, Ontario. There's such a lack of like health care due to like the geographical limitations of Northern Ontario, um, and it made me want to, um, you know, pursue it. We hear so much about crisis and failure inside Canada's medical system, but this approach is finding success and getting noticed by other medical schools nationwide. Students and graduates are keen to celebrate it. David Common, CBC News, Sioux Lookout, Ontario. This weather update is brought to you by Capital Ford Lincoln. Used car savings is on now.
And our weather specialist, Ethan Williams, joins me now. The sky in Saskatchewan is not that blue this hour. Uh, no, certainly not like the one behind me uh, right now. That is for sure. We have lots of thunderstorm activity. Severe thunderstorm warnings in effect for an area near Watrous, all the way to just east of Saskatoon, to Rosturn, all the way up to the Spiritwood and Big River areas. Nickel to ping pong ball sized hail, some heavy rain, strong winds here. Also in effect for the Buffalo Narrows and Peter Pond Lake area. And now warnings popping up just west of Regina as well uh, through the uh, Rolo area near Pence, north towards Strasbourg. Similar threats there. And this is all because of a low pressure system just spinning near the Alberta border. And we have two frontal boundaries here. This warm front, which is triggering this first line of storms uh, heading through the Saskatoon and Regina areas. And this cold front, which is bringing another line through. We'll be thankful we're not in Alberta, though. These are tornado watches and warnings and tornadoes reported in that province today. The cold front really dropping temperatures on the back side of it. Under 20 degrees in some portions of southwestern Saskatchewan, but we're still close to 30 in places like Regina and Weyburn and Estevan at this hour. This low pressure system really picking up our wind gusts for the first time outside of thunderstorms in quite a while. Uh, we've seen gusts uh, upwards of 50 to 60 today. They're kind of in that 40 to 50 range at this point, but those winds mostly coming from the south, and that means that we're seeing an end to air quality advisories for now, and we're starting to see those air quality health index levels drop. In fact, places that were up around a level 10 out of 10 yesterday, like Saskatoon, Prince Albert, Buffalo Narrows, back into a low rating today. Not much change through Regina and uh, Weyburn Estevan areas. But we are hoping uh, to, to see that improve through the night tonight. But a change will be coming. I'll tell you about that in a second. But first, our focus is on the cold front. And uh, it will be weakening a bit as it moves eastward. So thunderstorm development should be dying out tonight in south and central. But on the northern end of this, we'll see some heavier rain move through northern Saskatchewan tonight and tomorrow as well. South and central clearing out, but much cooler tomorrow, especially in western sections. Could be only in the teens for daytime highs. And then Friday, some warmer air with this high pressure area starting to move in. An area of 10 to 20 millimeters possible in areas like Buffalo Narrows northward through northwestern Saskatchewan. Good news for the fire risk there. And then a good 5 to 10 in the rest of the north as we head through the day tomorrow and early into Friday morning. Now our winds still going to be quite windy tomorrow in southern and central Saskatchewan. Gusts out of the west between 50 and 60 kilometers an hour. And those will start to diminish a bit on Friday. Still could be breezy, especially in some central sections. But those strong westerly winds means that we are going to see another round of smoke moving into especially south and central tomorrow. The north, we could likely see those air quality statements return as uh, we head into tomorrow, but it doesn't last too long. Winds should pull that out of our area heading into Friday. Regina, outside of a little bit of smoke tomorrow, still going to be breezy. Normal for this time of year is what we're going to be seeing over these next couple of days, and then we're right back close to 30 degrees, and Saskatoon uh, again, I think temperature is going to take a sharp drop tomorrow, rising as we head into the weekend, but a better chance of some rain for you before things stay around normal. Normal for this time of year. Something that I don't get to say very often, Sam, especially over these past couple of weeks. The word normal is foreign to us now. Yeah, I don't know what it means. <laughs> Thanks, Ethan. You bet. A bridge to last forever. A group of grade six students coming together for a musical history lesson. Two schools in the Montreal area are bridging their love of singing with a deeper understanding of truth and reconciliation. The schools each wrote a verse coming together in harmony, you might say, for the chorus. We'll be back after the break. Amid public scrutiny, Canada's public safety minister said he'll issue a new directive ordering that he must be directly notified about high-profile prisoner transfers to lower security prisons. It comes a day after CBC News revealed the minister's staff knew about Paul Bernardo's transfer three months in advance and said they didn't tell the minister until after the transfer happened. Ashley Burke broke that story and has the latest from Parliament Hill. The public safety minister in the official opposition's crosshairs. He lies and lies and lies and lies. Conservative leader Pierre Polyev says the minister has to go. It is time for Marco Mendicino 
to resign. It comes after CBC News revealed Mendicino's office knew three months in advance that serial killer Paul Bernardo would be transferred from a maximum to medium security facility. But the office said it didn't share that news with the minister until after the transfer happened. It is something that, uh, that obviously we're taking seriously. The minister today admitted his political staff mishandled it. I have also made it clear to my staff that this should have been briefed immediately. Corrective steps have been taken. I have dealt with it. He expects us to believe that his staff just forgot to walk down the hall and inform him that perhaps the most notorious killer in Canadian history was being moved out of a maximum security penitentiary to enjoy more luxuries and more freedom. Mendicino promised change, saying he's issuing a ministerial directive that he must directly be notified in advance of all high-profile transfers and that the victims should be too. To make sure that they put victims' rights at the centre of decisions to transfer, that they inform victims' families before those transfers take place. But the victims' families say they feel let down. There seems to be a rather cavalier attitude about, about something so serious and uh, and, and that makes them feel vulnerable and disrespected. The opposition says it's part of a larger problem. This government has a real, real bad habit of saying, I didn't know. They know so little. What the hell are they doing there? The Conservatives say Mendicino should step down, and if he doesn't, that the Prime Minister needs to fire him. Ashley Burke, CBC News, Ottawa. And Ethan's back with one last look at your weather. Starting sunny in Regina tomorrow. We'll be sitting at 18 degrees. Uh, well, mostly sunny. Maybe some cloud cover moving in uh, in the morning hours. But then as we head toward the noon hour, skies will begin to clear. But smoke moving in a little bit as those southwest winds really start to pick up around uh, 30 or to 50 kilometers an hour or so. Saskatoon will be starting on the sunny side tomorrow. A bit opposite from Regina. Still quite gusty. And then as we head toward the noon hour, cloud cover building in. Still windy. Not as much smoke expected as in Regina. Still looking at severe thunderstorm warnings in place for areas from Watrous to Rostern up toward the Spiritwood area and as well just west of Regina from Strasburg down to around Rollo. Heavy wind, or strong winds, heavy rain, nickel to ping pong ball sized hail there and we're looking at severe thunderstorm watches in effect through much of the province tonight, Sam. So good night to keep the eye to the sky. All right. Thanks, Ethan. You're welcome. And before we go, the Vegas Golden Knights have made hockey history, taming the Florida Panthers in a spectacular Stanley Cup win last night. And you could call them the honorary Saskatchewan Golden Knights with all those local connections. Just six years in the NHL, the Knights took home the coveted trophy, the fastest track to win the big game of any of the league's expansion teams. The Knights beat the Panthers 9-3 in Game 5 last night in Vegas. As for the Sasky connections, here we go. Chandler Stevenson from Saskatoon, Davidson's Braden McNabb, Braden Patchell from Estevan, Yorkton's Caden Korchak, all part of the active roster during the postseason. The team's GM, Kelly McCrimmon, is from Plenty. And the Knights' assistant director of players personnel, Bob Lowe's, is from PA. And a number of players that played in the WHL here as well. That is it for us tonight. For news anytime, head to our website or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Ethan will be back with more tonight at 11. Thanks for watching and have a great night.